I spoke with Hiroshi Matsui. He's running an English school for Japanese people in the Philippines. The name of the school is Brighter. He has written extensively about the future of jobs and also his experience working for Apple as a senior manager. Let's listen to him. Hello, everybody. This is Kaz Weka, and here with me today is Mr. Matsui. Hello, Mr. Matsui. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for、uh, talking with me today.、Um, you are actually now living or staying in, in the Philippines. Yes, I am. <laughs> so maybe you can start telling us about that. And also, we are going to talk today about、uh, Ryugaku, yeah, studying abroad. And,、um, okay, all right.、Uh, Merit、so and,、uh, stuff、I'm、like that. I'm in Cebu right now.、Mm-hmm. Cebu is the second largest city in the Philippines. But that said, this place is something like 60 years behind of US or Japan. So, streets are not exactly paved, it's not clean, it floods pretty often.、Um, you know, you see trashes, what have you. I mean, just not, not very clean at all.、Um, when you think of Cebu, people think that it's. That it's a, a beautiful beach resort. It really isn't. It's a pretty dirty little city. That's what it is. So, a lot of people who come here, they really get shocked initially. You know, it's very different from what they have imagined. And that was true to me as well. I came here and I was like, is this it? You know? And,、um, but、uh, I'm used to it now. I've been here a while. Um, that,、um, you know, just like only less than a week ago, I got my computer stolen in, in、uh, this bus called Jeepney. I couldn't, I didn't even notice. They're so good. And so, stuff like that that happens that are not even imag- imaginable in Japan. And、uh, so, you can't. You really have to like, be a l o t t e d at all times. My first question. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's Cebu. <laughs> I guess I'm going to start with my first question. So, what do you think is the value of studying abroad、uh, generally or in such a tough or different environment from Japan? Maybe that, Two、yeah. things I would say. One is, of course, you get to see you know, other values, other living s t a n d a r d Really, it really shakes your world, right? So, what you thought was the world really isn't. And then there are different parts of the world which is like vastly different from what you're used to. And then that's the norm here. And、uh, You know, life goes on here as well. And just knowing that really gives you a very different perspective. So, like, I would say, like, gaining different perspective is one of the values, I'd say. And second thing is, of course, English or the language that, that, that you acquire in that place. Here, you get to learn English or the local language.、Um, they speak Cebuano here. And then,、um, you know, if you live in Germany, that's German. And then if you live in France, that's French, and, and so on. So that's definitely something else you get to learn. And、um, so that's the two values you gain from actually living, studying、um, overseas. So,、uh, my second question is that、uh, when you, I mean, you yourself came to the United States when you were younger. You are still、right. young, but when you are younger, <laughs> if you could tell. <laughs> well, you no, tell. I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> well, well, you and I are about the same age, so if you say、right. you're young, I'm also young too. So, when you、okay. came to. So, tell, me,、uh, tell us a little bit more about your first、uh, you know, landing in this country and、uh, how it started. I was, I, okay, I was an exchange student.、Um, I was only 16. And I really didn't speak any English at all, you know, like really simple stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I want to go to the bathroom.、Uh, my hobby is whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's kind of it. So I really couldn't communicate. And、uh, honestly, it was terrible. 
and there were, that was before internet, and the phone call used to cost like 120 yen per minute. And so calling home was not even a question. And uh, I didn't even know how to make collect calls, so I, mean, I just got stuck with it. And uh, it took me about, I'd say, th three months at least before I started to get some hang of it. And before that, I really had no idea what was going on. I was like a little baby. And being a baby at age 16 is not fun. It was very uncool. I uh -huh. hated it. <laughs> uh, um, how do you go from there to uh, becoming an a, a Apple a manager type of position? Like, <laughs> there's a big... <laughs> Yeah, well, I well honestly, I had no idea. You know, one thing led to the other, and then uh, so where was I? So first three months, and then then Christmas came, and then when the calendar year turned, I finally felt like I got some hang of it, and then um, I realized that I need to memorize some new words, <laughs> so I can actually say more stuff, and then I start to study a bit, mm -hmm. and. I really started to study um, intensely after I went back to Japan. Oh. Uh, that, that one year was like a huge wake-up call for me. And then after I went back to Japan, I actually wanted to study. And so I studied. And, uh, and then so I went back and I was 17. And two years later, I came back to the United States to go to college. This time, in that two years, you know, I got uh, necessary TOEIC, not TOEIC, but a TOEFL score and all. I studied pretty hard, actually. I read a lot of books, and uh, I used to listen to FEN, <laughs> because that was like the only thing you could uh, listen yeah. to that was like live, so. Would people I today to know, would people today know what FEN is? I know it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, FEN stands Foreign, no, 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 Far East Network. That's right. And then that's a radio broadcast for, uh, what was that aimed for? Probably the M M like armed, armed service folks yes. residing in uh, Korea and Japan. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> yes, I used to listen to that, like American Top 40 and all that news stuff, you know. Then uh, gradually I picked it up and then I gained more uh, words and I read a lot of books. And that was like, I had to go to like Kinokuniya in Tokyo in order to buy anything at all. And uh, so every time I run out of books, I went there, I bought four or five books new books and I came back and I read again and and took me at least two weeks to finish any book at all and uh, but I, because it was so expensive I actually did finish every single one of them um, and uh, well so I didn't have a whole lot of choice um, but oh. I managed <laughs> I wanted to uh, mention one thing, which is you said that the first year you were here in the United States was really tough, but when you went back, you know, you started really taking things seriously. And I feel yeah. like that is really interesting because even for me, I studied in the United States when I was a college student. When I went back, things were a little different. Mm -hmm. Like I was able to speak better, better English than other students, so it was kind of easy for me to make American friends in Japan, for example. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that became yeah. advantage for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had that too. Yeah, I had yeah. that too. I went so, back and I made some American friends in Japan, so I was able to like keep up my conversational skill, which was good. But at the same time, I knew I was lacking a lot of stuff in order mm -hmm. to study in the States. Um, you know, I didn't know any difficult words, big words. Um, so I couldn't read any news articles. I couldn't really do much at all. So I really wanted to gain that, and I put a lot of a lot of time into that. Yeah, and I'm glad I did. So you know, many people wonder, oh, I gotta 
I want to study in America or something. And they say, but I have to be prepared and I have to study this and I got to be really better than this before going to the United States or in other, to other English speaking countries. But it may be better if you just go and experience <laughs> and then, it. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then suffer a little. <laughs> suffer a little and then let's start from there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it it's, it's gives you a wake up call, you know. It's like, right. oh my God, what I do, you know. Yeah. So uh, that really worked for me. And uh, but the problem with that approach is that there are a lot of Japanese living everywhere now, unlike our time. Mm -hmm. And so you ended up probably hanging out with the other Japanese folks, and that will just stop you there, you know. So you gotta stay away from uh, Japanese. Right. I actually you know, also folks might... living in the area that you move into. There's something good about trying Oops, to. Yeah. Uh, there's something that's great about running away from. Um, how do you say your own people? I mean, you will be right, speaking right, English right, the whole right. time. Uh huh. And, um, I actually went to Mexico City when I was studying in America uh, because mm -hmm. I felt that there, some of the reasons was uh, there were too many Japanese influence in California. Oh and then, yeah. Yeah, and then I went to Mexico City to study Spanish, and the mm -hmm. people who I studied Spanish with were English speaking people, so I ended I up I ended up improving hanging my English, out with, well, hanging okay. out with That's Americans funny. in Mexico City yeah. finally. So, okay, uh, <laughs> you know when I went to Europe, I kind of did the same thing because uh, I was traveling alone, and then every time I stayed somewhere, I was easy to find somebody who speaks English. Typically, American students who are traveling during the summer, so I ended up hanging out with them most of the time because you know we could communicate, and uh, yeah, that was weird feeling. So there's a kind <laughs> of a unconventional. Uh, a regular way of finding a good place to study English, I think. Right, right. Yeah. And then also, like, you know, when I went back to college, that was a very different experience from being in high school. Uh, things are a lot tougher. Um, you know, I had to graduate, so I really had to study. And then, of course, the hard, first year is the hardest. They give you a lot of assignments, and I had to... They read and write and read and write every single day. I stayed up to 2, 3 a.m. just about every day and during weekend, weekdays. I don't think I've studied that much ever than the, the, my freshman year. And after second year, things gotten easier. But uh, freshman year was hard, very hard. But I'm glad I went through that era. Maybe as a result that, of that, as a result yeah, of that, you can yeah. read faster. And, oh uh, yeah, read you can faster. Write better. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you gain vocabulary, so you can actually have more. Action. You know, it's not just chatting with your friends anymore. So all of that really, you know, came from that first year. And second year and on, I started to swim for uh, uh, the university swim team. And that was also an interesting experience as well. Were you a good swimmer? I used to swim competitively when I was younger, so that, that was something I restarted. And then, uh, so I ended up, you know, going to practice mornings and then in, in the evenings. Uh, swim meet on the weekends, we get on the, on the bus and go to different schools, get to see different parts of the country, you get close, closer with your teammate and all that. And so that was a really wonderful experience altogether. So that's how you made uh, uh, friends and you also yeah. Yeah, were able to learn from that, I guess. Yeah, and then like same team in Ohio is like 99.9% .9 white. So, like, typically I would go to, like, swim meet. I'm the only colored person in amongst, the, like, the thousand people that's there. So, um, you know, you got to mingle. What are you going to do, you know? Yeah. The only experience I can have like that is if I go to a, a country music concert, I can become the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the only one Asian guy among white people. Right, right, right. <laughs> 
but I live in so, the county. Yeah, I live in a county where there, there are lots of Koreans and Asian people here. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, currently. So when when I came back to the United States through Apple to California, it was like a different country altogether. You know, Ohio versus California. It's just California was, you know, very diverse. Still is, and whereas Ohio was more homogeneous, a lot of whites, very little Mexicans and whatnot. And so, um, I like California. You know the diversity. Um, no, no, I really don't see if I could ever live in some place like Ohio again. Not that I don't like that place, but life was kind of boring to me. There. I know how it looks like in Ohio. It's just flat, and uh, there's not much oh, to yeah. see too. No, and then, yeah, yeah. a lot of trees. <laughs> and after so many years of being away from it, you go back, and there's not much to kind of feel. Oh my gosh, this is you know, there's nothing to really feel natsukashi about because well, it's yeah, just well, flat. Right. Well, I do get that, but but you know, you drive for hours, and then just you just see farmlands, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know. I really don't miss it that much at all. And if I see it like once a year, that's good enough. <laughs> you know, I miss my host family. I still keep in touch. I, you know, we are connected. I am connected to them through Facebook and all. Uh, I go visit them every now and then. And they came to visit me in California too. So I'm glad I met the family. I'm very happy and grateful that I'm still in touch with them. But I don't wish to really live there again. Well, I guess people in Ohio may say the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah, think, yeah. They yeah. they have this notion that uh, California is a crazy place, and only crazy people live there, or something like that. And uh, and they're like, how do you live there? You know, it's, I like it. I like it there. Yeah. And then I come to the Philippines, and it's so different. It's so different. You know. I'm imagining yeah. that it is a little Latin, and it's a little like uh, you know Mexico or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say that. It's just I get this almost like a deja vu kind of sensation sometimes because a lot of things are just like when I was small in Japan. But that said, again. I don't know if I want to go back in time, for example. Um, Could you say a little bit about how it looks like Japan of all times, in terms of like how the road is not paved and stuff, or? Yeah, right. So like when I was small, like main, you know, like the highways are still under construction. Some of them are, and then like uh, uh, main streets are sure they were paved but if you go to back street they want to pave it all at all and then i had we had this river in town we still do but uh it doesn't flood anymore it, it used to flood every single year at least a few times and uh th that that disaster was something of a norm so nobody made a big fuss about it and uh that's like that here, you know, when when uh, sewage, you know, over flood and then, then just, you know, streets are cuff, covered with water, nobody give a damn. It's like just a norm, you know? And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, it used to be like that. Not that I miss it, but it used <laughs> to be like that. <laughs> So you think when Japanese go, uh, Japanese people go to the Philippines or Cebu, will they be able to experience a completely different world? And, oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah, guaranteed, and guaranteed. Is, and, and things, I mean, will they learn it, uh, things kind of in a very positive and educational way? I'm, I'm sure some people will. And then, you know, there are some people who really like it here that, that they decide to live here too. And that, uh, but the majority of the people, this place is kind of scummy and, you know, you know. And, but they're here for a short while, so they go back and many of them just don't ever come back. 
And then you go to the beach resort, and then, you know, Japanese, Koreans, and Westerners are there staying. And as soon as you go through the gate, it's like a different, different era. It's like traveling in time through that gate. Interesting. Um, yeah, and all of a sudden, you have everything. Very clean, very neat. And, so you're saying uh, it's a separate world in the... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Entirely. Poor entirely. and rich kind of distinction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. major distinction. And then uh, I make you think about life, you know, and then you make you realize that you, we are all really lucky to be born in, in place like the U.S. or Japan. We are so lucky. Do you think there's but, some benefit of looking at the third world while staying there and become more aware yeah. of justice and fairness and all these issues? Yeah, I think so. I mean, to me, it really made me think about what is it that I can do to the people here. You know, I created, you know, 20 plus em employment so far. I, I'm intending to create more. but beyond that beyond that is then anything i can do here and that makes me think that all the time what do you think is the uh, i guess i have a final question for you what is the distinguishing feature of your program uh, different from other ones in the philippines in yeah the i push my students i really do and uh, that uh, also it's it really comes from my own experience as well you can't just sit in your own comfortable boundary and then hope that you're going to improve. It just doesn't work that way. You really have to be pushed. It's difficult to push yourself. But once you come to my school, you will be pushed. And then everybody else is studying, therefore it's, it's not as hard. You know, when you're alone and studying, yeah, it is hard, it's lonely. But when everybody else is studying just as much or more, you feel almost like it's almost like a sense of duty and that everybody puts so much time so they do improve very quickly and another thing i i spend a lot of time on is pronunciation it's something that i suffered through so so many years and you know like let's say you want to go to mcdonald's i can't uh -huh. because my pronunciation was so bad or i go to burger king i wanted to order a Whopper, but I couldn't because I couldn't pronounce Whopper and then so on. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to go through any of that if I, there was a decent pronunciation program in Japan to begin with. So that's something I really spend a lot of resource on. It's almost like a pronunciation is the basis. And actually, English or any languages used to be spoken without written languages for the longest time in the history of human beings, right? So right, right, essentially, right, the, right. any languages are sound-based languages. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, that said, of course, you know, once you get to like elementary school level, then you got to start reading. And then reading also help you expand your world that will help you gain your vocabulary and so it works both ways but uh, i would say pronunciation is the most you know basis of all things i almost think i am trying to make it sound a little exaggerated but uh what if we just learn any language without learning how to write it or read just spend one whole year just speaking it you know maybe that may help um, because you will recognize the language or the spoken language first, and then you go to the next steps. Or would, yeah, would you, you, know. you know that's that's what that's what babies do essentially, right? right? Uh, and that uh, they go three, four years without ever reading anything. But you know, I run daycare, right? right. And then I read books to the, the kids, and they gain interest. Their interest towards writings at the very early age. Uh, they point out letters go, what is this? What is this? Then they want to make the sense out of the world. They want to connect their uh, world that they perceive to the written language. And that happens much earlier than I thought they, that, that it would. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so I think it actually comes hand in hand. Maybe you don't have to start writing so, so fast, but reading 
if you're capable, I would say do it. And because that, I think that would just connect to your world very quickly. I think but you, one thing, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. ahead. Let's finish your thought. Okay, but that said, one thing you don't need is you don't need to translate everything into Japanese. That's you just do not need that. That's for sure. I mean, it gets kind of confusing and even uh, unproductive, yeah. you know. Um, right. Uh, recently, you ha I think you have expressed this notion on your Facebook or Twitter, I forgot which, but you said that uh, grammar, you know, if you do uh -huh. too much of it, too much of it maybe gets in the way of learning it and in your case you said that you didn't study grammar too much but you kind of came back to it afterwards and then studied it yeah 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 it. so with grammar i'm not saying you don't need to study grammar but but when you have too much of the knowledge up front and then many of my students do and whenever they're trying to speak you can tell that they're first thinking of which grammar rule to apply right. and then then next step is to think of words to fit into that and then speak so they're like two steps and they're always always really slow and that uh, you know like not too long ago i had this this student who was uh, hikikomori mm -hmm. and uh so this person really never studied and she left school when she was like seventh grade first semester that's it so she probably learned like a to z and this is a pen and that was it but she spoke better than a lot of people a lot of people um and that's because you know in a way i think she learned exactly like the babies do she made some uh, american friends and that's how she picked it up and then that was kind of shocking almost. But when she took TOEIC, her score was only like 550. Mm. But she spoke better than the people who has like 700 or 800. And, uh, and on contrary, people with 800 or 900 or whatever, they're always thinking of grammar first. And they can mm. really never, it takes so long to to respond to anything at all, whereas, whereas this girl, she could immediately respond. Uh, that was like distinctly, distinctively different. I think uh, when they think too much about grammar, they are thinking in their head and they're kind of constructing a sentence and in their mind yeah, there's yeah. this kind of, uh, you know, uh, stream of like sentences and words going on in their head. Yeah, While yeah. In reality, I think you really have to focus on what you are saying each yeah. word at that time yeah. instead yeah, of thinking exactly. too much ahead of time. And right, if you right. do that, you get begin to feel nervous and your yeah, speech becomes yeah. really fast. So I yeah. think that's the disadvantage. It's, I mean, often the times, let's say I'm to, like, like, like right now, I'm speaking and as I am speaking, I'm not really constructing sentences at all. It just was just come out. And it's almost like a reflex in a way. And that's because it's all internalized. And then how do you internalize a language? That's the biggest question I've been trying to answer. You know, uh, it's really strange, you know? And uh, I've been reading a lot of books on, on this particular topic right now. And then, uh, uh, they've done, uh, you know, people have done uh, a lot of study on this subject already. And uh, yeah, I was tweeting about this, but uh, one was like a phonological awareness. It's the awareness of, towards sound. And uh, th some, that's something you develop when you're a baby. <laughs> and uh, all, there are five elements. Um, uh, and uh, that when i read about this it just made sense and then there wasn't so much on grammar there was like nothing about the grammar really but it's the connection of words right even though like two-year-old they would never say car red but they would always always say red car white car uh say you know hot water they don't say water hot and a young child never mistakes uh, even the, how to use the, for example. Exactly, exactly. So that's a mystery. 
it's either yeah. babies or young children are smart, or it is possible that the English grammar is actually simple. Yeah, it's you know, two year old would say, right? And then learning grammar doesn't help, it really doesn't. And then people who have really high score in on TOEIC, nine close to like you know. Uh, 990 or even higher, you know, the, the 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 perfect score, they still messes up articles. Right. So yeah. It's a mystery, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, there's there are some general rules on it, of course, but it's about how you develop the sense of oh, it doesn't sound right. You know mm. what I mean? When when it's not. When it's not right, it just, just doesn't sound right to you. My view on this is that the English language is actually very easy, and it's the language mm -hmm. that you can speak while thinking. Isn't yeah, it weird yeah. that you and me can sp speak without really knowing how to finish my sentence? But yeah, I exactly. Can, I'm like I'm I'm constructing yeah. as I speak. Right. So that that doesn't mean that you and I are so super smart, but the language is like this you can think I'm thinking right now I'm thinking and speaking I can think and speak at the same time that's not yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah, smart yeah. it's because the English allows that but on the well, other hand maybe know, yeah, Japanese probably is the same or a little different I'm not sure yeah I think it's the same it's just that that's English hadn't internalized for you and me Right. But when it's not, it, you have to think. And, uh, you know, like uh, Bruce Lee said, don't think, feel. I think maybe <laughs> that there is some truth in that. Right, right. All right, on that note, uh, uh, thanks for this conversation. And sure, I think, sure. Uh, Thank you. People have uh, lots of interesting things to learn from this conversation. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Sure. Thank you. Right. So you so no, <laughs> If you want a cookie, people have to subscribe to this channel. You get a cookie per subscriber. Okay? Ask people to subscribe to this channel.